I'm Trudanius Beard. I'm the minister evangelist here at the Northwest Church of Christ here in South Haven, Mississippi. Listen, I'm reminded of a passage of scripture in Psalms uh, chapter one, verse three, where the Bible says he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the waters that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. One thing about healthy trees, healthy trees survive storms because of healthy roots. When the storm comes, it does not move because the roots are so deep. I want to encourage you to invite you into this body of teaching for the next three weeks, starting February the 9th through the 27th, as we enter into a body of teaching called Rooted. I'm not leaving. Let's be honest, at some point in your life, and at some point in my life, we're going to encounter a storm. It may be a financial storm. It may be a marital storm. It may be a family storm. It may be a doctrinal storm. But the only way you're going to survive that storm is that you're rooted and grounded in Jesus the Christ. So I want you to invite you to come and be with us here at the Northwest Church of Christ, 1483 Brookhaven Drive here in South Haven, Mississippi. As we encounter this teaching, because when our storm comes, we may bend, but we won't break because we're so rooted in Jesus Christ. And as the songwriter says, I shall not be moved. May God bless you, and we'll see you soon. And the rain will fall. The tree that's by the river will stand tall to be rooted and grounded in Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for petition God in prayer for us on tonight. Uh, we are thankful again to, to be here and to be able uh, to study of God's word on tonight. I pray, it is my prayer that you come with uh, the mindset and the attitude that you're going to open up your the word of God, open up your mind and to hear a word from God. And so it's always great whenever God gives us the opportunity to study his word. Amen. And because he gives us this opportunity to study his word, we are delighted. Uh, to hear what God will have us to even uh, to know even on tonight. And so tonight, what I want to do, I want to uh, continue our series. We're going to end this series on next Wednesday. Um, we're going to end this series on next Wednesday, but it's my prayer that since we've been studying, talking about Rooted, I pray that you have enough information to continue to study, uh, to help you along the Christian journey. So you can have the mindset that no matter what happens in life, no matter the tragedy, no matter the circumstance, no matter the trouble, that you're still going to be rooted in Jesus Christ, and you're not going to let anybody sway you and to move you differently. Uh, I will have you to know it's, it's a privilege and it's an honor to be in Christ, because when you're in Christ, there is special blessings in Christ Jesus. And sometimes the wind will blow. Sometimes the storm will be so heavy, but aren't you happy to know that even when the wind blows because you got an anchor in Jesus Christ and because you're rooted and grounded in Jesus, that you ain't going to go anywhere. And so we're going to continue the thought tonight, the study tonight. Uh, and I, what I want to do, I want to take my time, just kind of go through um, uh, tonight, tonight. And if you have any questions, please put it in the comment box. Or, no, let me take that back. Send it to Sister Carter, and she'll send it to me. It's easy for me to track it that way. And, uh, and we'll, we'll, get, we'll get right into the word tonight. So we've been, we've been doing this study on Rooted. And the whole purpose of this particular series is to get us and to teach us to, that God is expecting us to be so rooted in Jesus Christ that when the storms of life comes, that we'll stay with God. When doctrinal storms come, when people uh, come up with teachings that are contrary to God's word, that you will be so grounded in this book that you will not allow uh, the teachings you hear in the world persuade you from the things of God. And, and it is my prayer and it's my hope that since we've been studying that you have, uh, have, uh, have grasped a part of that. And so, and so we talked about being rooted in salvation. I pray now that, that you are assured that you're saved, amen, that it doesn't matter 
how life, what life throws at you. But I, I pray that you are confident in the fact that you are a Christian, that you are saved, that you've been called out of the world into the kingdom of God's dear son, and that you can lay down at night and say with confidence, I am a child of God. Amen. To say with confidence, if I die, heaven will be my home. I pray that we have done a, a great job of trying to uh, display the word of God in such a way to show us uh, the privilege it is to be in Jesus Christ. Uh, and then we talked about being rooted in the church, and we talked about New Testament Christianity, that we we'll li we'll live in a world where, uh, you know, uh, people are teaching so many different things, practicing so many different things, and uh, we're not trying to condemn anybody, but we practice New Testament Christianity, amen. We still believe that God has a pattern for one to be saved. We still believe in the oneness of the church. They all the saved are in the church, are in the ecclesia. And so we've been, we study um, talking about uh, the church of my Lord, amen. And we talked about uh, what it means, the foundation and it's, and it's, uh, it's fortified, amen. Uh, we, we talked about uh, being rooted in the church and it don't matter what you do to me. It don't matter if you make me angry, if you hurt me, I'm not leaving the Lord's church because of you because you're not the one that added me, bless the name of Jesus. But it was Jesus, it was God, the one who added me to the church that Jesus built. And so we we, we looked at that uh, and then we ushered into this thought of being rooted in the word. And I started off showing you some erroneous teaching uh, on behalf of the Jehovah Witnesses. I showed you some stuff uh, as it relates to uh, some things that you may hear. I didn't get to the black Israelites and still may at some point get to it throughout this year, but I didn't get a chance to get to them just to say uh, that, that they too have erroneous teaching contrary to the Bible, the word of God. And so we, so we was trying to get us connected to knowing what the Bible says, what the Bible says, uh, and what the Bible means uh, for the modern day Christians once we studied it appropriately. Uh, and so what I want to do tonight, I want to continue this thought into next week if we don't finish, on being rooted in the word, okay? So what I want to do tonight, I want to talk about being rooted in the word again. I, I need us to know tonight, if you're listening, listen closely, I want you to know that the church of my Lord, the people of God, we ought to be a word-driven assembly. I need you to get that. Uh, I want us to know that if we are called to be Christians, if we're called out of the world into the kingdom of God's dear son, then I need us to recognize and I need us to know that we are a word assembly. Let me say it one more time. I need you to get it. I need you to know that if God has called you out of the world, if you have been repented and been baptized for the remission of your sins, added to the body of Christ, the church of my Lord, I want you to know, in case it's a secret, in case somebody didn't know, that we are a word assembly. Now, that does not take anything from praise. It doesn't take any way, anything away from singing, amen. It doesn't take any way of, uh, from us doing the works of ministry. All of that is important. But I need to share with us that when push come to shove, we are a word assembly. In other words, we are people of the word. Amen. We are people. I wish I had some amens right doing there. That, that, that we need the word of God to guide. We need the word of God to show us and direct us. Amen. We don't, we don't operate based on our feelings and our opinions and our thoughts. Amen. But we are driven by the word of God. And so I, I think uh, in this modern day church, I think we have, uh, we have substituted the word of God for cliches. I, I'm afraid that in this modern day church, we're so used of telling people what we think and what we feel and how we see it, but nobody is directing anybody to the word. And I need to be very clear to help us to understand that if you're not in the word of God, when the storms of life come, you will fade away with the storm. Did you hear what I just said? If, if, if you're not consistent studying and reading this book, then I want you to know if you're not rooted in the word, when life comes 
and meet you at and knocks on your door, come in your house and sit on your couch, you will not be able to make it because you're not rooted in the word. You know why people leave Jesus? Because they're not rooted in the word. You know why people leave the Lord's church? It's because they're not rooted in the word. You know why people give up on God? It's because they're not rooted in the word. But I need us to know tonight from uh, the, this, this book, this, this book we call the Bible, I need you to know that this is a living book. This is a living word, amen. In other words, the Bible says the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. I double dog dare you tonight if you get in the book, your life will change. I double dog dare you tonight if you ever get serious about studying the word of God, who you are today will not be who you are on next year if you begin to be for, for real get in the word of God. See, sometimes, sometimes we throw, we want to go to the word and we wait till we in trouble to go to the word. When the word ought to already be in us, y'all ain't saying nothing tonight. It it ought to be the word of God that stri that helps us a along the life's journey. And so, what I want to do tonight, I, I want to take my time and to help somebody tonight to show you why you ought to be rooted in the word. Amen. I want to emphasize that. I want to emphasize you really becoming a student of the Bible. Amen. I really want to emphasize that. I really want to emphasize the fact that God wants you. God gave you this book called the Bible. He gave you his, his, his thoughts, what he believed. In. He gave you this word, amen, so you and I can know the mind of God and how God operates. And so I need you to understand tonight, if I want you to make up in your mind that you're going to become a student of the word. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, it's one thing to know what the Bible says. But it's another thing to know what the Bible means, because there are some people who know what the Bible say, but they don't know what the Bible means. What do you mean, preacher? They, there are some people who can quote book, chapter, and verse, and they'll say this is what the Bible say, but they don't know how to give you practical application to it. Bless the name of Jesus. There, there are some people who tell you that, that, that you got to trust God, but they can't give you no practical application of what that looks like. And so what we're interested in as a word assembly. We're interested in knowing the word of God in such a way that when I'm in a, between a rock and a hard place, when I don't have anywhere to go, nobody to talk to, nobody to call, I can look within the word of God and I can see how God's word speaks to me. Amen. Now, now I've told you, if you're going to study, we'll, we'll probably do a, at some point, do a, uh, a study on how to study the Bible. But I try to give you these nuggets along the way that, that to know if you're going to know, give proper application to a text, you need to know what the text meant to the original audience. Oh, that's real practical. Uh, you need to know that that if, if when, when the Bible says certain things in the passage of scripture, that you don't need to make application to you first, but you need to find out what it meant to the original writers. And if it didn't mean what you said it meant to the original writers, then that means you're out of context and you're trying to make the word mean say what you wanted to say. So I want, I want us to be serious about being students of the word of God. Be serious about being people of the book. Because when we are people of the word of God, we will stand for wherever God has us to stand. Amen, amen. Now I want to show you three things and we'll try to get done tonight uh, with this particular look. Um, this particular half of, of the study. Number one, I want you to know the reason you need to be rooted in the word because number one, God's word encourages us. Oh, I know it's simple, but it's showing sure enough right. I, I want you to know you and I need to be rooted in the word of God because it is the word of God. It is the Logos word that encourages us. Okay, okay, let me say it one more time. To those of us who was discouraged this week, to those of us who was discouraged on today, to those of us who got a phone call or got some news that caused you to become discouraged, 
it took away your strength and your courageousness. Well, can I tell you, when you open up the word of God, it is something about that what God has done, that God has given us his word to give us life. Oh my God. Have you ever been through a day and it seemed as though that so much stuff was coming at you, it took the, the strength and the life out of you, and you found yourself discouraged. Anybody going to be real? Anybody ever been there before where you're driving down the street, amen, and all you're thinking about how you can't pay your bills and why you can't pay them and how you're going to get that paid, and you just discouraged because you feel like if I don't do this, then that ain't going to go right. You just discouraged. But I double dog dare you, if you ever take the time, to say, when I'm discouraged, God, I want to hear from you. And I want to know what you will have me to know. I promise you, when you open up the word of God, it's the word of God that encourages us. Let me show you something. In Psalms 119 and uh, one, uh, 114, Psalms 119 and 114, I want you to see this. The Bible says, David says rather, you are my refuge and my shield. Oh, don't miss that. He says, when I'm in trouble, you are high. When, when, when I need to be protected, you are I go to. Y'all missed it. He says, you are my refuge and my shield. In other words, a refuge is a place to hide when you ain't got nowhere to go, when it seems like the enemy is after you. He says, that you are my refuge and my shield. When I'm in battle, you are the one that will protect me. Oh my God. He says, your word is my source of hope. Oh, did y'all. See, that's why you got to be rooted in the word, child of God. Because David shows us that when I'm rooted in the word, the word is the source of my hope. Oh my God. In other words, that, that when I begin to get in the word of God and God begins to speak to me through the law God's word of God, that when whatever I would discourage about, I can come in, become encouraged because I began to study his word. Has anybody, can anybody witness to the fact that there have been days in your life where, amen, where you didn't know how you was going to make it. There were days in your life where you were just sad, but you got on Bible class and you came home Sunday morning and you heard the word of God and it was just what you need to give you hope. I'm here to tell you that God gave us his word so his word can encourage us it is the source of my hope see david they have anybody david you know david david went through some stuff but david had enough confidence to know that i need to hear from god wouldn't it be great if we had more believers that when they got in trouble that the first thing they need to say to they said they need to hear from god wouldn't it be great instead of hearing from everybody else that what you need to say, I need to hear from God. I need to check and see what God has to say about it before I hear from my friends, my family, my co-workers. Uh, I need to hear from God and I need to know what God has to say on this matter. See, somebody right now struggling in your marriage, have you asked yourself, what did God say about it? Somebody right now struggling with finances. Somebody need to ask, what did God say about it? Somebody struggling right now on your job and you trying to leave that job to go to the next. What did God say about it? Somebody got to have sense enough that when you are in time of despair and when you are discouraged, somebody got to have sense enough to say, what does God has to say about it? So what, so what he says here, he says, he says, he says, you are my refuge. And you my strength, my shield. Oh my God. Somebody put he's my refuge and he's my shield. Yeah, he's my refuge, he's my shield, but uh, but his word is the source of my hope. You need the word of God. I'm thankful tonight that you gathered here tonight because it's the word of God that's gonna encourage you. See, here's the here's the truth. Um, I may not, as the preacher, may not know everything you're going through. But God knows what you're going through. 
And because what God knows what he's going through, sometimes God will give you a message and give you a word and drop it in your spirit because God knows exactly what you need in that particular time. So, so watch this, Psalms 119. Psalms 119 uh, verses 143 through 149. I want you to watch what David, the summer says. He says, as pressure, watch this, and stress, bear down on me. Anybody ever been there before? Dave, see, see, you thought you was the only one, but you ain't the only one. Hey, Amen. We all got some, some, some sort of, of trauma and some sort of trials and some sort of tribulation. But I need you to know that what he said. He said, as pressure and stress bear down on me. Now, this is, now this is David. This is David, the man after God's own heart, David. Bless the name. This is David, the one that God anointed and the one that God appointed. But yet this man who God anointed and appointed, this man still uh, uh, endured pressure and stress. Amen. Stop telling yourself you too stressed to be blessed. I mean, too blessed to be stressed. In other words, you, you, you saying that, but you about the bus. You better tell God that I got a lot on me, God, but I'm still going to stick with you. Notice what he said. As pressure and stress bear down on me. Watch it. I find joy where? In your commands. Oh my God. In other words, God, when you begin to speak, I find my joy in your word. When you begin to say and talk, I find joy in your word. I know I'm stressed. I know I got pressure on me. I know I feel like I'm going to take my, uh, pull out my hair, but God, all I need to hear from you, I need to hear your word. Because if I hear your word, I find joy in it. Oh my God. When I hear your word, I find some delight in it. He says, I find joy in your command. Watch this. Your laws are always right. Did you hear what I just said? Um, the summer says, Your laws are, you know, God, your word is always right. Even when I don't understand it, it's still right. Even when I don't know what you're doing, God, it's still right. Even though, God, I scratch my head and I have to ball up and cry sometimes, I just believe it's your word is still right. He says, watch this, help me to understand them so that I may live. See, that's the prayer. That's the prayer. You need to know his word is right, but you need to ask for understanding so you can apply what he's told. Have God ever told you something in his word that you didn't quite understand? And because you didn't understand it, you didn't do it because you didn't understand it. There ain't no excuse. God says, even when you don't understand, when are you going to take the time to pray? God, give me some understanding so I can live by. He says, I pray, watch this, with all my heart. Answer me, Lord. I will obey your decrees. Watch this. I cry out to you. Rescue me that I may obey your laws. Do you see that? I rise early before the sun is up. I cry out for help and put my hope, watch this, in your words. My question tonight, maybe you are so discouraged and you're not rooted in the word. It's because you have failed to put your hope in the word. Oh, my God, that I need you to know what you got in your possession is golden. It, it, it is not just a, a, a black, a black and white word, a, a, a black uh, a letters on, on, on white page. No, 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 no. This is his word. His word, child of God, it gives us hope. Watch what he says. He says, I rise up early before the sun is up. I cry out for help and put my hope in your words. Watch this. I stay awake though the night thinking about your promise. See, that's meditation. It is when you take the word of God and you then recall what God said to you. Oh, I'm trying to help somebody tonight. See, it's not enough just to hear the word, but get the word of God in your spirit. That, that, that when, when life happens and when you begin to worry about life, then you can begin to be able to quote scriptures back to yourself and meditate and remind yourself on what God said. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You need to find your favorite verse. And when life gets difficult, you need to begin to quote that verse out loud. 
it begins, it begins to move and it begins to operate and begins to do some stuff in your life differently. And folk may not understand it, but every now and then when life gets heavy on your, on your back and life burdens put you in a jam, you need to go to scriptures like Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. It encourages you. It's scripture like Psalms 27. It says, uh, uh, it says uh, that I will not fear what man shall do unto me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. You got to learn how to get in his word. Watch what he said. He says, thinking about your promise, watch this, in your faithful love, O Lord, hear my cry and let me revive by following your regulations. In other words, the word of God, church, it encourages us. You cannot afford to go a day without getting in his word. <laughs> you, you, you can't afford, you can't be, you can't say you too tired because, because your strength depends on it. Amen. If, 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 if it just needs to be one verse, you better every day, you got to pick up this book and go to it and see what God has, has, has to tell you on that day because you can't go through another day. You can't afford it. Because how many of you know life happens? And when life happens, sometimes it throws things at you that you weren't expecting. Oh, my God. You, you, you didn't expect to lose your job, but it happened. You need the word. You, you, you didn't expect the conflict in your marriage, but it happened. You need the word. You didn't, you didn't expect your children acting out the way they did, but it happened. You needed the word. You got to be sure, without a doubt, that you need the word of God. To encourage us, I want you to watch something else. Go to uh, 2 Samuel chapter 22. 2 Samuel chapter 22. And beginning with verse number one, I want you to watch what the Bible says. The Bible says, David sang this song to the Lord on the day the Lord rescued him from all the enemies from Saul. In other words, David was a summons. And David said, that I'm going through what I'm going through. And if I'm going through this, and if God brought me out of what I'm going through, surely I can open up my mouth and give him thanks. Oh, I wish I had a Be Real Church tonight. See, see, when God begins to take you out of some stuff and bring you out of some stuff, why would you want to keep that to yourself? Because you don't even realize there is a brother or a sister who dealing with the same circumstance and they need to hear your testimony of how God brought you through. And if God brought you through it, then he can bring me through it. Oh, my God. See, it reminds me of a story of a little boy who was, who was in, the, in the house with his daddy. And, and he hears, uh, he hears uh, the ice cream truck. And he's, and he's excited because he hears the ice cream truck. And, 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 and he says to his daddy, daddy. Uh, the ice cream truck is outside. I want some ice cream. And his daddy said, boy, calm down. Uh, the, the ice cream truck ain't even on, my sh on your street. And the little boy says, that's all right, daddy. I hear him. Although he ain't on my street, uh, he's still in the neighborhood. Okay, y'all need to lean in. I'm, I'm going to tell you tonight that that's why when I begin to see what God does in your life and how God bring you out of some stuff and how God brought you out of some stuff that, that when I'm in my situation and when God bring me out, I'm going to celebrate with you because if God brought my neighbor out, that means that, my, that God is in the neighborhood and sooner or later, he'll be on my street. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That when God does for you, well, only God can do for you. You begin to give them glory. You begin to give them thanks because of what God has done. David says, I'm going to write a song because God delivered me from my enemy. Watch what he says. He says, and he's saying, the Lord is my rock. Oh my God, my fortress and my savior. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. He is my shield. The power that saves me, oh my God, in my place of safety. Notice what he says. He is my song. Y'all see that? He, I'm sorry. Uh, he's my refuge, my savior. The one who saves me from violence. Watch this. I called on the Lord 
who is worthy of praise. And he saved me from my enemies. Watch this. The waves of death overwhelm me. Have you ever been overwhelmed by the waves of death? Oh, my God. Uh, he says, the waves of death overwhelm me. Floods of destruction swept over me. The graves uh, uh, wrapped his robe around me. Death laid a trap in my, in my path. But in my distress, oh, my God, y'all see that? He says, in his distress, in my distress, I cried out to the Lord. Yes, I cried to my God and help me and help for help and he heard me from his sanctuary my cry reaches his ears in other words david says that in my distress i knew who could give me a word in my distress i knew who could protect me in my distress i knew where i can find my refuge and tonight i'm talking to some some individuals who are almost about to give it up I'm talking to somebody who's always almost about to walk away from it all. And I need to tell you tonight that you need to be rooted in his word because in, in, his, in his word, it gives us strength. Oh my God, I, I need you to see it tonight. Uh, not, only, not only does God's word encourages us, but, but secondly, God's word sustains us. Okay, y'all get that? Um, his word not only encourages us, but his word sustains us. Oh, I'm trying to show you why you got to be rooted tonight. See, see, when I pick up his word, his word just don't encourage me. But when I'm reading his word and his word talks back to me, it is in his word that it sustains me. Uh, uh, to sustain, keeps from, uh, it means to keep from falling. It means to uphold or support. In other words, God says, what I want you to know that when you get in my word for real, I ain't talking about just I am talking, I ain't talking about just trying to get through a trying to get through a, like, a, like a history book. No, 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 no. I, I need you to get in my word for real. And when you begin to get in my word for real, I will begin to speak to you and sustain you in a way that you didn't even dream of. Have you ever been there before that you read a you read the scriptures for years, but when you got in the word for real, the word that you saw when, when you was 19 is different when you become 25. Y'all know what I'm talking about? When, when the, the word that you read in, when you was 25 is become different when you're 35 because, because what God says, what I want to do, I want to uphold you. I want to sustain you in my word. Watch what he says in Psalms 55. Watch this, Psalms 55, verse 12. Uh, Psalm 55, or verse 22, rather. Psalm 55, verse 22. Watch what it says. Give your burdens to the Lord. Oh, my God. Give your burdens to the Lord, and he will take care of you. He will, he will, he will permit the godly and slip and fall. Do y'all see that? He says, I, what I need you to do, give your burdens to the Lord and he will take care of you. Y'all ain't saying nothing yet. He will not per permit the godly to slip and fall. See, see, this is the passage of scripture that Peter quoted when he says, cast all your cares upon me for I cares for you. In other words, I need you to know that it is his word that sustains us. It is his word that helps us. It is his word that gives us support. And that when you are at the brink of your end, when you don't know what to do, I need to share with you, cast your cares on the Lord. Do you not know that he cares about your cares? Oh, I said something right there. Cast your cares upon the Lord because he cares for you. He cares about your care. The stuff that, that causes anxiety for you, the stuff that stresses you out, the stuff that, that got you want to throw in the towel. He cares about your cares. And he says, what I want you to do, I need you to throw it on. I need you to give it to me because I can do more with it than you can do with it. So God says, I need you to get in my word because it's scriptures like that 
that gets me through what I'm going through. He says, give your burdens to the Lord and he will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. Watch this, Psalms 84 and 11, one of my favorite passages of scripture. Psalms, Psalms 84 and 11, I want you to see this. It says, for the Lord God is our sun and shield. Oh my God. He gives us grace and glory. Watch this, verse, the latter part. The Lord will withhold no good thing from those who do what is right. That's a word for somebody who, who praying about some stuff and God ain't gave it to you yet. That's a word for you. This is a word for somebody right now who's stressed out because you feel like you 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 missing out on something. Notice what he said. He says, the Lord will withhold no good thing, underline good thing, from those who do what is right. In other words, God says, I'm trying to sustain you and help you in the word because it's going to sustain, sustain you. I know you feel like you're losing out. And I know you feel like that, that God ain't working fast enough and you won't, and you think you want a thing and you really want it. But God says, if you do what is right, I'm not going to withhold nothing good that's for you. So the flip side of that is, if I withhold it, that means it ain't good for you. Oh, y'all ain't talking back to me. See, see, he says, his word sustains me. That should help somebody who's stressed out about a certain thing. Yeah. That should help somebody and, and, and support somebody tonight. The word, watch how the word sustains you. He says, whatever you want and you think God holding out, God says, if I would hold it, it ain't good for you. But if I give it to you, if it's a good thing, I'm going to let it let you have it. But because you my child, I know sometimes you want stuff that you think is good, but was really toxic. So in order to protect you, I will hold it from you. Because if it's good for you, I won't withhold it from you. Oh, my God. I'm talking to somebody tonight who needs to hear this tonight who feel as though that everybody is winning besides you, who feel like everybody's doing great besides you, who feel as though that God has forgotten about you. Listen how the word sustain you tonight. He says, if it's good for you, I ain't going to hold it back for you, from you. In other words, that should give somebody hope that when you pray to God and you say, God, can I have? And when God say no, you ought to walk away and say, thank you, daddy. Because if it was good for you, you would have gave it to me. See, I know at the time you ain't going to say that because you really wanted it. I know at the time you ain't going to say that because you felt as though that you needed it. But when you know who God is and you know what God is doing, and you know how God's operate. You know his history. Oh, my God. You know his track record. And God knows better than anybody what's good for me. Oh, watch this. Watch this. First Peter chapter 4. First Peter chapter 4. I'm going to get happy by myself tonight. First Peter chapter 4, verse number 19. Watch what the text says. Peter says, watch this. So if you are suffering in a matter that pleases God, watch this. Keep on doing what is right? Let me see how you read. See how the word of God sustains you. Because somebody, I don't know who need it. May not be a word for everybody, but it's a word for somebody. Watch what he said. If you are suffering, whoever whoever you are, in a matter of pleases God. Now I need to put some context. Peter is writing to a church, writing to believers who are suffering because of persecution. They are suffering. They're losing their lives. They don't understand why they're going through what they're going through. And Peter is writing them. And notice what he says to him. He says, if you are suffering in a matter that pleases God, keep on doing what is right. I don't care if you are suffering, still do right. Oh my God. I don't care what the crowd is doing, still do right. I don't care what the naysayers say, keep doing right. I don't care if folk doubt God Almighty, you keep doing right. He says, keep doing what's right. Watch this. And trust your lives. To, the, to God who created you. Oh my God. For he will never fail you. Man, y'all can't tell me that, that, word, that scripture right there alone sustained me. That scripture right there, right there alone can help me. It sustains me. It holds me up. 
he says, Peter says, trust your lives in the God who created you. For he will never fail you. I need you to notice something. The word trust there or the word entrust is an interesting Greek word. It's a banking term, which means to deposit for safekeeping. Oh, y'all, let me, let, me, let me linger there just a little while. The word trust, he says, you need to trust your lives to God who created you. Well, the word trust there or entrust is a banking term in the Greek, which means to deposit for safekeeping. Okay, say it one more time, preacher. To trust or to entrust. It's a banking term. In the Greek language, it's a banking term which means to deposit for safekeeping. Okay, let me bring it home a little bit. You, you know how you get you got direct deposit. Yeah, you know, you, you work that week or that two weeks or that month and you got direct deposit and they, they direct deposit your money into the bank. Yeah, y'all say man when you can, yeah, yeah. But here, here's the thing, here's the, here's the interesting thing. You you don't you've never met the owner of the bank. You 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 don't you have way know the teller of the bank. You you don't know you don't even know everybody that works in the bank, but you entrust your money in the bank for safekeeping. Okay, you don't know the CEO. You don't know have you have way know the teller. It bless the name of Jesus. You don't know everybody that works there, but yet you entrust your money in a bank and you don't even know where they keep it at. But you trust that when you go to the ATM machine and put your code in, you trust the very thing that was deposit, you're going to get out of. Oh, y'all ain't helping me tonight. See, when you trust God, if you can trust a bank, and you, know, you don't even know the CEO. If you can trust the tailor to get your money and give you the receipt and you don't even know where she put it at, amen. If you can trust them, then you can't tell me you can't trust a holy God who woke you up this morning, clothed you in your right mind, put clothes on your back and allowed you to put one foot in front of another. If I can trust a man that, that I, don't, I ain't never seen before, I can trust a God who is the one who will sustain me. He said, entrust me. In other words, you may can't figure it out, but just trust, give it to me. I know you don't, I know you don't know what's happening, but give it to me. Entrust me with it. Just like you did entrust and you gave your bank, your information to your job to make sure that they put your money in the bank account, you entrust me with your life. Is there anybody tonight who says, God, thank you for the word? Because it's the word that sustains me. It's the word that encourages me. And I'm not going nowhere. I'm not leaving Christ. I'm not leaving the church of Christ. I'm not leaving God's people because I recognize it is his word that I need to help me. Now, when I, when I watch, I got one more and I'm done. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. He says, God's word encourage me. Somebody need to put that on. I need you to write that down somewhere in your bedroom and uh, put it on your refrigerator. His words encourage me. But also his word sustains me. But watch this last one when we're done. His word grows us up. Yeah. It is his word that grows me. That I want you to know God's word is not just designed to save you, encourage you, to sustain you, but his word grows you up. Do you not know that where you are right now in your life, in the longest Christian journey, is not where God wants you to stay. Oh, yeah. See, 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 <laughs> some of us think we've already arrived to where God wants us to be. And that's where you cease to grow. But I want you to know that God's word is designed, brothers and sisters, to grow us up. 
Oh my God. It, it, sometimes, sometimes when you read his word, his word, it'll make you cry. Anybody know what I'm talking about? His word will make you say, ouch. <laughs> his word will make you say, God, you talking about me. His word has a way of growing us up and causing us to look within, our, look at ourselves. And when nobody else, when you don't want to hear what nobody else has got to say about you because you got an attitude because of they bringing it to your attention. But it's the one thing when you read the word and study the word and when the word is preached, when the word is taught and God has a way of giving you what you need right then to grow you up. I need to tell us church, that all of us can stand to grow up a little more in Jesus. Oh, from the pulpit to the pew, I want you to know that all of us can stand to grow a little more in Jesus. Can I tell you that, that if you the same way you was 10 years ago, shame on you. If you the same way you were uh, two years ago, shame on you. If you still struggling with the same old thing you were struggling with a year ago, shame on you. At some point, some way, somehow, you had allowed a word of God to grow you up. Now watch this, watch this. I need to show you something. I'm trying to do it in a, in a, in a very uh, quickly time, but I need, to, I need you to see this. I, I need you to turn to 1 John with me real quick. 1 John chapter, chapter 2. First John chapter two, and I, for time's sake, I just sub surveyed this up, uh, but I want to show you something real quickly that 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 His Word it begins to grow uh, us up because this passage of Scripture is going to speak to your soul, <laughs> Amen. It's going to help us why that God wants us to be rooted. That sometimes He has to deal with us in a way um, that sometimes He has to cut us before He heals us. And so, what I want to show you uh, in First John chapter two. Uh, I, I want to show you uh, in this particular this particular narrative of what John of John is writing. He's writing because there are some false teachers, and and what he wants the believer to know, he shows them in in First John chapter two. He tells the believers that if you want to test whether or not your Christianity is authentic, right, watch how he grows them up. He he says if you want to know if your Christianity is authentic. Then he says, there are three things you need to know. That when your, when your Christianity is for real, there is moral obedience, there is social love, and, and there is a particular doctrinal belief. He does those, those, it, that, that's the whole, the first John, uh, first John, when you read first John, that's what it's all about. He, he, show, he says, if you want to know whether or not you have grown in your walk with God, he's writing them because some false teachers have come along. And he shows them in 1 John chapter 2, and he'll continue that thought throughout the, uh, the book, but he shows them authentic Christianity. And he shows them that when you for real about God, there is some moral obedience. There is, there is agape love, and there is a doctrinal belief that you will get. Now, I need you to see it. In 1 John uh, chapter 2, verse 1, I need you to notice what he says. John says, my dear children, I'm writing, watch this, to you that you will not sin. He says, the reason I'm writing that you don't sin. Did you get that? The reason I'm writing to my people, I don't need you to sin. But watch this. But, but watch the good news. But if anyone does sin, watch this. We have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. He is Jesus Christ, the one, watch this, who is true, who truly is righteous. So he says, don't sin. But if you do sin, do you see how God covered you? Oh, y'all better be happy. Don't, don't act like you don't sin. He says, he says, I don't want you to sin, but in case you fall into that dynamic of sinning, you got to advocate. But then watch what he says. He says in verse number three, and we can be sure, watch this, that we know him, know who God, if we obey, his word or commandments. Y'all see that? Do you see the moral obedience that, that God, I'm going to obey you because if I'm my Christianity is going to be authentic, then I'm going to obey you. Now, there is a difference between 
of practicing sin and living there. Amen. I ain't got time to deal with that tonight, but, but there's a difference. And so what he's dealing with, what John says, he says that I need you to look at the moral obedience that I'm going to obey God. Verse two, verse four, if someone claims I know God, watch this, but doesn't obey God's commandments, that person is a liar and not living the truth. If you are a person, this is going to make sense in just a few minutes here. If you are a person who made up in your mind that you ain't, you ain't going to live right, you ain't going to do what God say do. He says, to say you know God, you a liar. To, to, to make in your mind that you ain't going to grow, that you comfortable where you are. Amen. He ain't talking about struggling. And we talking about struggling tonight. He ain't talking about that. I'm talking about people who made up in their mind that they going to stay where they are. That they, if they're going to be an alcoholic, they're going to stay one. Y'all ain't saying nothing. If, 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 if they're going to be people, amen, if they practice homosexuality, they're going to stay there. They're not going to stop. He said, anybody who want to stay like that and don't obey me, they're a liar. They don't know me. Watch what he said. He says, those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. Watch this, verse, verse 7. Dear friends, I'm not writing a new commandment. Now watch this. He goes from obedience, authentic Christianity, obedience but watch what he says but I'm, I'm i'm not writing a new commandment for you rather it's the old one you have heard from the beginning the old commandment to love one another it is the same message you heard before yet it is also new jesus lived the truth of this commandment and you are living it for the darkness is disappearing and the true light is already shining don't y'all miss it don't y'all get quiet on me tonight verse nine if anyone claims I'm living in the light, watch this, but hates a fellow believer, that person still lives in darkness. Anyone who loves a fellow believer is living in the light and does not stumble. But anyone who hates a fellow believer is still living and walking in darkness, such person does not know the way to go, having been blinded by darkness. Now I need y'all, I need to put some, some, uh, some, some truth to that right through and there. He says, he moves, if you of your of your Christianity is authentic, he why he's trying to grow them up. If your Christianity is authentic, you're gonna you gonna, there's gonna be more obedience. But he also says, you're gonna have some agape love, you're gonna love some your fellow believers. Because if you say that you love them. If you say, if you say that you hate them, then you, God says, you don't love me. Now, I want you to know the opposite of hate is love. The opposite of love is hate. So in other words, if you don't love me, then the opposite of that is to hate me. Now, I'm not saying there are moments in time, of course, we don't, we dislike people ways and how they do. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about this disdain face that you have when it, for an individual when they walk into the room. It's, 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 that, it's that mentality that you have, have encountered that you will not go out your way for them. Oh my God. Because you do know a, a love ain't a, ain't a feeling, it's a choice. Agape love suggests I love you unconditionally in spite of who you are. In spite of your ways, in spite of your attitude, in spite of your crazy uh, mouth, I still love you. I still want the best for you. It's real quiet right through in here. In, in, in other words, in other words, he says, your Christianity ain't authentic. If you hate me, if you won't go out your way for me. Because some of us, I ain't going out my way for him. No, that ain't Christianity. Because you only love those that love you. You only go out of your way for those who go out of way for you. But God says that the reason I need you to know this is because if I live in you and you in me, then you got to learn to display me on earth. You are my hands, my feet on earth. And what, how I love people, I need you to love them the same way. Oh, that's a hard word right there tonight. But he says, I need you to see it. He says, if you say that you know God and you hate your brother, 
He says, you're a liar. Watch what he says. He says, verse number, uh, drop down to verse number, uh, verse number, uh, verse number 18. Watch this. It said, 1 John 2, 18. Watch this. Dear children, the last hour is here. You have heard that the Antichrist is coming. And already many such Antichrists have appeared. From this we know that the last hour has come. Verse 19, these people left our churches, but they never really belonged to us. Otherwise, they would have stayed with us. When they left, it proved that they did not belong to us. Notice what he said. He moves from, from obedience to love to doctrine. Watch what he says. But that you, uh, but, but you are not like that for the Holy One who has given you the spirit. And all of you, because you know the difference between truth and lie. That's why it's so important, church, to be rooted in the word. Watch what they do. Verse 22. And who is a liar? Watch the, watch the false teaching. Anyone who says Jesus is not the Christ, anyone who denies the Father and the Son is antichrist. Anyone who denies the Son doesn't have the Father either. But anyone, watch this, who acknowledges the son has the father also. What are you doing, God? What I'm doing, I'm trying to grow them up. I'm trying to show them they'll keep my word, they'll love, and they'll have the right doctrine. But this is what I want to close with, and I'm done. Go to 1 John chapter 5. And when you get a chance, read the book of John. It's, it's, it's a real good book for you to, for you to read. Uh, but I want to read something for you. Uh, I need you to see this. Because this is how God grows us up. He wants you to love. Love your brother and your sister in Christ. Amen. It, it, he wants you to love the unlovable. He wants you to walk in obedience to him. Right? He wants you to live for him. But then he wants you to have the right doctrine. Watch this. First John chapter 5. <clears throat> in verse number 1. Watch what it says. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has become a child of God. <clears throat> and everyone who loves the father loves his children. Watch this. We know we love God's children if we love God and obey his command. I need y'all to notice something. He says, what I want you to know, he says, I need you to know that we love God's children if we love God and obey his command, still talking about obeying, verse number three, loving God means keeping his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. Do y'all see that? In other words, he said, what I want you to know, I need you to know something about the commandments of God, something about the word of God. I need you to know that my commandments are not burdensome. Verse number four, for every child, of God defeats the evil world. Watch this. And we achieve this victory through our faith. Now I need, I need, to, I need to paint a picture right here. Read verse number four again. For every child of God defeats the evil world. <clears throat> Some translations say overcome the evil world. And we achieve this victory, watch this, through our faith. Watch this. And we can win this battle against the world. Only those who believe that Jesus is the son of God. Now, let me say this and I'm going to close, but this is good to me. He's telling them, trying to grow them up. But watch what he says. He says, the one that's going to overcome or defeat the evil world is the one who has the victory when they have their faith in Jesus Christ. Now, I need you to underline the word overcome and underline the word victory. That's very important. Let me tell you why that's important. Because as he's writing, he's writing them, trying to get them to understand something in particular. He says, they, they are overcomers. Not that they will overcome, but that they've already overcome. Oh my God. See, I, I want to grow somebody up tonight to know that if you are in Jesus Christ 
if you believe that Jesus is Lord, if you have been bought by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, you already are overcome. Okay, maybe maybe they don't hit right right there, but let me tell you, the, there's a Greek word that for victory there is a noun and it's a verb, victory and overcome. They're both a noun and a verb, but they come from the same Greek word, which is the Greek word Nike. Yeah, y'all put that in the chat box, y'all. See, y'all didn't even know there was a, there was a Greek word. Let me let me help you some. The word overcome and the word victory in the Greek is the word Nike. Okay, okay, y'all y'all tripping. Um, this is the victory, Nike, to those who've overcome the world, Nike. Uh, y'all know Nike, y'all got some on your feet right now, just do it. But let me tell you the background of Nike. The Greek background and cultural background of this particular text is the word Nike was actually a Greek goddess. She was a Elohim that the, that the Romans worship. And they worship Nike, her, because she was known for her strength, her speed, and, her for, uh, and for her gaining victory. Oh my God. Oh, look at this. She was known for her speed. She was known for her strength. And she was known for her overcoming battles and obtaining victory. In other words, they call her the wing goddess, that even when they was in battle, they will worship her because they believe that in worshiping her, that they could get strength and speed and gain victory. Okay, y'all ain't missing it. It's interesting that John flips the script and he understands that they worship the Greeks worship uh, this Greek goddess by the name of Nike. However, he's saying to us, those who are going to overcome or get victory, that you ain't got to worship a Greek goddess. It's because of who the God you serve is the one, the way you're going to overcome. So I want to tell somebody tonight that maybe God is trying to grow you up and maybe he puts you in a particular situation because God is trying to make you to overcome. He wants you to overcome your situation and your circumstance and your trouble and your trials because he wants us to understand that we can be Nike and we can overcome whatever we're going through. It's interesting that the Romans named her Victoria because of the of their of their entrusting in her ability. I just find it interesting that God thought enough of us to tell us that we overcomers, that in spite of our trouble, in spite of our trials, in spite of our tribulation, it don't matter how hard things, how how, how crazy things are, you can overcome. Aren't you happy tonight? You ain't got to wait to get the victory, but you already obtained the victory. You already overcome. Come out and say, Nike, just do it. Just do it. Just do it. I just want to tell you tonight, all you got to do is trust and obey. Just do it. You got to learn how to believe that this God that we serve, although you never seen him before, you never touch him, but you can see the evidence. You can see how he's working and how he's maneuvering in your life. Nobody ain't got to tell you how good God is. You done seen it for yourself. You done seen how you was in situations that you couldn't get yourself out of, but God showed up and brought you out of it. And so tonight, I want you to know, be rooted in the word. Be rooted in his word because his word, it encourages us. It sustains us. But his word grows us up. That's what I have for you tonight. I pray something was said that could help you. Uh, as you as you walk this Christian journey called life, and even when life gets rough, stick with God. Do not leave God because life, sometimes it'll put us in a place where we want to give up, but you ain't got to give up. Just say, God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to trust you, God, and believe you know 
exactly what you're doing. God bless tonight. I want to encourage you to be there Sunday, Saturday, Saturday night and Sunday. I would love for this audience uh, to be here or there on Saturday as we have a night of prayer uh, that we will sing, we will give testimony, we will praise, and we'll get a preach word on Saturday night. And then on Sunday, we'll do it all over again. So we want to encourage you to do that. Also, Sanctuary uh, Sunday for the Sisters are this coming yeah. Sunday. Uh, <clears throat> you have a five-minute grace period. Asking everybody to get there. It would be great if you get there earlier so that they'll lock the doors and that y'all can usher God in prayer. But we're encouraging you uh, to, to be with us on Saturday and Sunday.